of you joining us online or watching from home and uh, thank you for being with us in this format and thank you for our crew here making it possible. Um, we're going to move forward as best we can under this season and um, continue to gather and to worship God. So uh, we will continue to do that and thanks for being with us as we do. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. to be written for our learning. Grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Judges. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after he had died. So the Lord sold them into the hand of King Jabin of Canaan, who reigned in Hazar. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Harosheth Hagawim. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had 900 chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly 20 years. At the time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Lepidoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramha and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak son of Abinoam from Kadesh in Naphtali and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go take position at Mount Tabor, bringing ten thousand from the tribe of Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, and are to meet you in the Wadi Kishon. Then his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 123. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of the servant look to the hands of their masters, and the eyes of the maid to the hands of her mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God, until he shows us mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy. For we have had more than enough content with him. Too much of the scorn of the indomitable rich, and of the derision of the proud. God, but keep his commandments, prosper our heart. Our second reading is Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the, end, that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For the God has... For God has destined us, not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we, be, whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encouraging, encourage one another and build each other up, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. The gospel hymn is, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord, for our Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be as when a man, going on a journey, 
summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. <clears throat> to one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. <clears throat> Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter? And you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, the nice thing about uh, watching a sermon online, or, uh, pre-recorded or live stream, is that if you don't like what the preacher is saying, you can just mute the computer until I finish, and then turn it back on when, or turn the sound back on when you see things happening at the altar. So I won't know if you do that, just so you know. Uh, there's an option for you. Um. As I said, thank you for gathering with us in this format, and thank you for being here for our team who makes it possible. There's a small team of us here, fewer than 10, um, to adjust to these circumstances. Um, and it's not easy for us, and I'll say it's not easy for me to not see all of you here with us in person, uh, and I miss those interactions that we get on Sunday morning. Uh, we'll pray and trust that those will be back soon and that uh, God will get us through these times, as I know he will. Uh, and we just have to trust the Spirit to move us through and trust in our bishop and the diocesan staff to make these the right decisions to keep us safe, as I believe they are doing. Um, and we will move back into our church now, into a time, um, at least for the next two weeks, for this week and next week, where we won't see each other in person. Um, 
And so that is not an easy thing. We will wait and anticipate and prepare for when we can be together again. But our nation, too, is moving into a time where we are seeing this virus become more dangerous, as it was back in the spring. More people are getting it, and more people are being hospitalized. Um, so it is an anxious time, a concerned time for many, a time of waiting, hopeful waiting for uh, some, that we will be clear of this pandemic soon, and in preparation for that time when we can return to our lives of being with each other as we could before. It is a season of waiting and anticipation, of preparation. And so our church gives us that season as well. In these few weeks before Advent, uh, we've already begun focusing in our scripture lessons and in our hymns about preparations for the coming of Christ. This begins even a few weeks before Advent, which comes a month before Christmas. We do look forward in the church to the day when Christ will come again and bring healing and bring peace to the world and will make all things new. And so, as an illustration of that, we have this parable of the talents in which a man goes away and leaves his, entrusts his property to his servants. He gives them talents, to one five talents, to one two, to another one. And talents in this story is a, a, a unit of money uh, in ancient Israel, but it sort of works in a happy linguistic coincidence to illustrate for us what the parable is sort of about. That is, in the parable, the owner, the man, leaves his servants money. Uh, but to us, that represents God giving us talents, as we would say, gifts, skills, abilities that we can share with others for his glory. And so the man goes away and leaves his slaves these talents. And then he returns to the one whom he left five talents. Uh, the one whom he left five talents says, Look, I have made five more talents. The one who had two talents says, Look, I have made two more talents. And one who received one talent said, I knew you were a harsh man, so I hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. The master rewards the first two, saying, You have been faithful in little. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. But to the third he says, You wicked and lazy slave. And he casts him out into the outer darkness, where, the parable says, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is another one of those parables that seems unfair to say the least and seems harsh and difficult for us to swallow, difficult for us to imagine. First of all, why did the slaves receive different amounts of talent in the first place? That doesn't seem particularly fair. And why was the punishment so harsh for the third slave? It helps to see here that Although each slave, each servant, received a different amount of money, a different amount of talent, the reward for the first two was the same. Their talents appeared to be different, but the value was the same in the eyes of their master, and so they are given the exact same words. Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Although the first received five and the second received two, although they made different amounts of money, their value in the eyes of the master was the same. And so they received the same reward, the same joy. And so I think it is with us. Whatever our apparent talent or lack of talents may be, in our eyes or in the eyes of the world, their value in the eyes of God is the same. The question is not how much we have or how much we seem to have, but what do we do with it? And so with the third slave, he says, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seeds, so I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. 
This seems to be a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy for this slave. He believes in a harsh master, and so that is what he gets. He is afraid, and so he continues in fear. Because he believes there is not enough, he does not have enough. What is illustrated for us here is two different systems of value, two different economies, the human economy and the divine economy, we might say, the economy of God. Human economy, human systems of value, are based on fear and scarcity. But the divine economy, the economy that God gives to us, is based on abundance. It is based on trust that there will be enough because God is infinite and God has enough for us to go around. So if we give what we have, God will make it enough. The divine economy is based on that trust. We might say it is an economy of trust or of faith. An important illustration of this in my own life has been Dorothy Day and the Catholic worker movement that she started. Uh, Dorothy Day was a writer and a social activist in the 20th century, um, and she, uh, she and her friends started this newspaper called The Catholic Worker, and it addressed labor issues during the Great Depression in light of the gospel teachings and in light of seeing Christ in the poor. And so, along with this newspaper, she and her friends started a movement of houses of hospitality. They opened first an apartment and then a house in the poorest part of New York City. And they took in those who needed food or clothing or shelter and just gave it to them. They had no central administration, they had no paid staff, they had no government assistance. They had no plan, really, apart from the gospel, that Christ was present in the poor and so they became poor with them and dwelt among them, serving them as best they could. And the Catholic workers, Dorothy Day and the Catholic workers, had this sort of investment strategy that was um, given to them by a priest who inspired them. He said, if you want to reap, you have to sow. And so the way they applied that was, if they needed something, let's say something for their newspaper or something for the house, but they didn't have enough money to buy it, they wouldn't save up for it. They wouldn't invest their money in the bank. They wouldn't set it aside. They would give away the money that they had to the poor and then pray for God to give them what they needed. Which sounds imprudent, if not ridiculous, to most people. But it worked for them time and again, and I've seen it work in my own life. And something about that worked for them because their movement spread like wildfire. And so even today, over 30 years after Dorothy Day's death, all over the world you can find the Catholic Worker newspaper being read, still selling for a penny a copy, and you can find Catholic Worker houses of hospitality that are making a difference in the lives of countless people. Dorothy Day is now up for the process of becoming a saint in the Catholic Church as well. So they believed if you wanted to reap, you had to sow. Or the way that Dorothy put it was, the best thing to do with the best things in life is to give them away. The best thing to do with the best things in life is to give them away. That's an illustration of the divine economy, God's economy. It is not an economy based on fear or scarcity. It is an economy based on trust that there will be enough because God always has enough and more than we need. So if we give it away, if we give away what we have to our brothers and sisters and give things back to God, he will provide us more than we could possibly imagine. Even in times of isolation, even in times of fear, even in times of pandemic or depression. And so as we think about the Catholic workers, as we look at this parable, we can ask, which kind of God do I believe in? One that is scarce or one that is abundant? Which kind of economy do I practice? 
The economy of God is based on abundance because the economy of God is love. Love is the only good that increases as you give it away. So the more love you give or show to others, the more it returns back to you. I have no idea why that is. I only know that it works because I've seen it work. And the only way to see it work is to try it. So, this week, even as we see numbers of the pandemic rise, even as we may be beginning to feel a little isolated or afraid, try it. Try giving some things away to see what you receive. If we give our food or clothing or shelter to our brothers and sisters who are in need, we will see that God will give us what we need. If we show love to others, we will see that we will receive the love that we need to sustain us. And that love will increase somehow, it does. If we keep things to ourselves or believe that there is not enough to go around, so I have to hide what God has given me, or protect it, or keep others from getting access to it, then we will cut ourselves off from opportunities for service and community with our brothers and sisters. We cut ourselves off from opportunities to receive the love of God. And that is a dark place indeed. That is the outer darkness. But God calls us back to him for opening ourselves up to our brothers and sisters in love. There is enough to go around. There is more than enough. The question is, will we give away enough so that we can receive? Christ is indeed coming again. He is coming to us. We will see him and meet him in our brothers and sisters here in the church. We see him and know him in and amongst the poor. We will see him when he comes again at the end of time. And if we give away what we have to our brothers and sisters, if we open our hearts and empty them by pouring out love for others, then he will fill us up with what we need. And he will say to us, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I invite you to affirm your faith in our Lord and his church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look 
of the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the living of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who claim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Eugene and Robert, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the Church. For the special needs and concerns of this gathering. We pray especially for all who have been adversely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We pray in thanksgiving for all those, all those who are putting their lives at risk to care for the sick and provide essential services during the pandemic. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And we raise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Have mercy upon us, most merciful God. May your compassion forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We invite you to participate in uh, receiving the sacrament through the prayer of spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And now the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated if you're standing up. Uh, we have uh, just a few announcements um, today. Uh, so I think Anne and Jim wanted to make a few, and then I'll make a few. So whoever wants to go first. Good morning. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, for those, we are still continuing our walk to Bethlehem. Uh, even though we may not be having church service, it would be good if you get out to exercise. Uh, some of you use this as a way to do that. If you'll email or call Dale uh, and give her those numbers for this week, uh, that'd be helpful. Uh, Friday night, we had a ham and oyster dinner uh, that uh, was for the uh, Community Life Center of Southern Calvary County. Uh, that money, we raised $1,500. Uh, that money will be used to provide vaccines uh, and necessary medical services for those in this part of the county that are underserved. Uh, so we really appreciate everybody that came out and supported that, and especially all those who work behind the scenes to make that dinner a success. Uh, lastly, uh, we completed an outreach project yesterday uh, we completed a fence uh, at Louise Smith's house. Uh, we had 13 people that came out for that. I had a great showing. Uh, allowed us to get the work done and uh, really quickly, uh, and it turned out really nice. So I appreciate everybody that uh, supported that. And again, thanks to all of you who support all of us in the work that we do here. The Calvert County Christmas Tree of Angels is back. Carolyn Steiner has the sign-up cards, so if you are interested, please call Carolyn. Okay, thank you both. Um, as we've said before, uh, we're live streaming today and not worshiping with all of us in person because um, of the rising number of COVID cases around the country and our state. Um, and the diocese has asked us to suspend for these two weeks, that is today and next week, and then they will let us know after that. So next week we will be doing this again, live streaming our service um, with only those here who uh, we need to keep the service running and live streamed. Um, and you can also watch it afterwards. Um, it's recorded. Um, and then we will communicate as soon as we know what happens after that. Much of our life these days is taken day by day. So we will let you know as soon as we know what our worship schedule and procedures will be after next week. Um, so just keep listening and, and watching out for that information. Uh, our outreach activities do continue. So this Tuesday, we will have our next food drop. Uh, so we will be delivering food from the Maryland Food Bank to families in our area who need it. So there's one opportunity of investing your talent, so to speak, this Tuesday from noon um, to about one or two uh, here at the parish hall, parish hall, so just drive your car up around noon and we'll give you some food to deliver and the addresses and uh, help us serve our community. So we hope to see you there on Tuesday. Um, one uh, sad note from this past week is that, uh, for those of you who may not know, Barbara Federhoff uh, died uh, on Tuesday night, I think it was, or Wednesday morning. Um, and so we've been in communication with her family. They went to wait to have a funeral service for her uh, until it's safer to travel. They're out west, some of them, and they went to wait to come here until it's safer to do so. So that will probably be at least a few months from now, and again, we'll be in communication about that. So but please keep Barbara and her family in your prayers at this time. One personal note from me, and then I think that's the last announcement, uh, is that many of you ask about P every week and how our process is going with getting her a visa to stay here. The long story short is that that visa, the permanent visa, will probably take at least another few months. Um, things are very uncertain these days all around the world, but uh, we know they're making some progress on that. We've been keeping track, but it will probably be another few months until she gets a permanent visa. 
but she would like to come visit again in the meantime, even though she can't stay permanently. So we're hoping for her to be here for Christmas. She has purchased a ticket to come on December 7th, late night December 7th, almost December 8th, um, and to stay through January 11th. So um, just please keep us in your prayers at that time. Before you go to bed on December 7th, please pray that she arrives safely and that she gets through customs okay. Um, we're doing everything we're supposed to do legally with visa procedures, but one never knows going into another country what customs people will say or do. So um, just pray that she will get here safely and get through customs okay, and that we can see her either in person or virtually at Christmas, that we can be together. I appreciate all of your support and prayers as far as that goes. Anybody in here have any other announcements? Okay. Thank you. We'll begin our closing hymn.